Good afternoon. People of God, I greet you all. You know, it is very hard to identify now who is who, who is a true sheep and who is a goat. But through this little exhortation, I believe that you'll be able to identify the true sheep that Jesus our Lord spoke about. Join me now in the book of the Gospel according to John chapter 10. Verse 6 says this. Those who heard Jesus use this illustration didn't understand what it meant. So he explained it to them. I tell you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robbers. But the true sheep did not listen to them. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and will find good pastures. Verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. A hind hand will run away when he sees a wolf coming. He will abandon the sheep because they don't belong to him. And he is it, their shepherd. And so the wolf attacks them and scatters the flock. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me. Just as my father knows me and I know the father. So I sacrifice my life for the sheep. I have other sheep too that are not in the sheep fold. I must bring them also. They will listen to my voice and there will be one flock with one shepherd. The father loves me because I sacrifice my life so I may take it back again. Amen, the word of God. We're going to look at the fact of the sheep, or fact or characteristics of sheep. What are sheep? That animal sheep. Sheep are best known for their strong flocking and following instinct. They will run from what frightens them and band together in large groups for protection. This is the only protection they have from predators. There is safety in numbers. It is harder for a predator to pick a sheep out of a group than to go after a few strays. Sheep have very good memories. They can remember at least 50 individual sheep and humans for years. They are also extremely intelligent animals capable of problem solving. The sheep. The topic of the today exhortation is safety in numbers. That's what Jesus wanted his disciples to look like, to be sheep, not God. And we come from the, the, reading the characteristics of sheep. When a predator comes to attack them, they gather together, forming a group giving no chance to the predator to pray them. Unless if one stray away, that is gonna, you will go after the straying one, but not those who are in group. But it's so astonishing to see sheep who are supposed to be united in love, but the very one that are splitting or devouring each other. Let's take a look of other verses. And we're going to learn from, from them. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10. What well, does the Bible admonish us? Chapter 1 verse 10. The Bible says this. I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, to live in harmony with each other. Let there be no divisions in the church. Rather, be of one mind, united in thought and purpose. That's what Christ is telling us as sheep. God wants us as sheep, Christian. It doesn't matter of your skin colors. Whether you yellow, black, green, orange, white, gray, whatever your color or, or your nationality or your clans or your villages. We are commanded to what? To live 
in harmony with each other. Let there be no divisions in the church. But unfortunately, you find in the church of God, when it's supposed to be love, unity, division, hatred, jealousy, murdering, gossiping. These things and such as this one are not supposed to be among the sheep. Because the product that we're talking about and the sheep that I'm, talk of, I'm talking about are not the animal but the believers. The disciples of Christ, those who believe, who have the testimony of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Those who have accepted Him as their personal Lord and Savior. That's the sheep I'm talking about. And you sheep out there, God is asking you and I to live in harmony with each other. As, 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 as the characteristic says, they have good memories. How many times do you pray for your, for, for your brethren? Do you have a good memory of your brethren who is in difficulties? Who's going through a lot of things, pains? Do you even mention him to your God in prayer? Do you care about those one who are sick? I have no one to help them. Do you give them your any head? Do you care? We can see that sheep that do care about each other. He was and the lamb, she create a strong bond. God wants you who believe in him to have this characteristic of the sheep. I'm going to read it again. Sheep have very good memories. They can remember at least 50 individual sheep and humans for years. It's so meant to see people in the same church not knowing each other's names, not even having the same numbers. Or know where to stay or live. They enter through the same gate, worship God, presidency, but they don't know each other. And they're the very one who gossip about, about other people. That's not a characteristic of a sheep that God wants you to be. They are also extremely intelligent animals capable of problem solving. That's what Paul is admonishing the church about. Low suing. If avoiding a lawsuit with Christian, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, you see this. He says, When one of you has a dispute with another believer, how dare you file a lawsuit and ask a secular court to decide the matter instead of taking it to other believers? Verse 7 says, Even to have such lawsuit with one another is a defeat for you. One, why not just accept the injustice and leave it at that? Why not let yourself be cheated? Instead, you yourselves are the ones who do wrong and cheat even your fellow believers. If you have legal dispute about such matters, that's for why go to outside judges who are not respected by the church? Verses, but instead, one believer sues another right in front of unbelievers. We read as sheep that are capable of problem solving. Why can't you solve a problem if you have a problem with your brother and sister? Why going to those unbelievers who are not respected by the church, telling them or fighting them to the court? Why not just accept the fact because you are brethren and sisters that have to be love, unity. The same way you cannot lawsuit your brother, your physical brother, biological brother and sisters. The same way you must not lawsuit your brother and sisters in the Lord to those unbelievers, judges. Judges. Alright. Uh, another one I said. They, they will run from what frightens them and bind together in large groups for protection. This is the only protection they have from predators. Their safety in numbers. Bible is telling us in, in, in First Corinthians to run from sexual sin. Do you run from the thing that threatens you? That is a threat to your faith? That's going to, to, to diminish your faith, your hope on God, on Christ? That's going to make you to lose confidence in His word promises? 
but you are the very first person who goes to those things that is a threat to you, to your faith as a believer, as a sheep. Why give yourself up to the predator while it's you had the chance to band together and forming a large group, giving no space for a predator to come and take? You see, in the church, those who call themselves Christian, that's low, that their sins, fornications, lust, no matter with gossiping all the evil things that you know you can add to what I mentioned. And whenever you find those things there that we mentioned, the, the predator will come and devour people. Remember, the devil is the lion prowling around seeking whom to devour. Those who go astray or are now together in the, in the group, then they are at the devil's mercy. We need to be solid for with one mind purposes to stand firmly against the enemy, helping those who are weak in faith. First Corinthians chapter four, verse five, the Bible says this. So don't make judgment about anyone ahead of time before the Lord returns. For he will bring our darkest secrets to light and will reveal our private motives. Then God will give to each one whatever praise is true. Remember Matthew, do not judge others or you will not be judged. If we are truly brethren and sisters, as we always say that, why judging other people? If you used to do that today, I beg in the name of the Lord, stop making judgment to one another. But instead, pray for one another. John chapter 17, verse 20, we go look at the prayer that our Lord made before going up to heaven. John chapter 17, verse 20 to 21, the Bible says this. I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through the message. I pray that there will be, there will all be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may that be in us, so that the world will believe you sent me. Unity is going to prevent the enemy from picking the weakling one. Harmony, love, peace, joy will stop the evil ones to threaten us, to kill us, or to devour us. By taking away love, harmony, peace, then you will be at the devil's mercy. You will be his prey. I'm going to quickly. Third John. 10, 11. I'm just, there are a lot of verses, but I'll just pick those verses to edify the people of God. 3 John 10, 11. The Bible says this. When I come, that is John, who said, I will report some of the things he is doing. Who's that? George Williams. And the evil accusation is making against us. Not only does he refuse to welcome the traveling teachers, he also tells others not to help them. And when they do help, he pulls them out of the church. Dear friend, don't let this bad example influence you. Follow only what is good. Remember that those who do good prove that they are God's children, and those who do evil prove that they do not know God. You must let the bad examples of other people to influence you, to influence your faith, or your relationship with your God or your maker. This leader that John mentioned, he wanted to be a leader. He didn't want to help the traveler, those who were coming to preach the gospel. And he was against those one who have them. And if you happen to have them, it's gonna throw you out of the church. As a sheep, as people of, of the same family, we need to help one another. Truly love one another and stop pretending. Love is equal to helping, giving hate and attention. 
Second John chapter, Second uh, John verse five. 2 John verse five and six. The Bible says this. I am writing to remind to remind you, dear friends, that we should love one another. This is not a new commandment, but one we have had from the beginning. Love means doing what God has commanded us, and He has commanded us to love one another just as you heard from the beginning. Love your neighbors, love your enemies, your foes, pray for them. Ask God to bless them, do good to them. Especially if, to those who are in the household of faith, remember what Galatians is telling us. Never cease to help those who are in the household of faith, your fellow brethren or sister in the Lord. Alright. 3 John chapter 5 verse 16. 3 John chapter 5. 1 John, sorry. 1 John chapter 5 verse 16. The Bible says this. If you see a Christian brother or sister shining in a way, sinning in a way that does not lead to death, you should pray and God will give that person life. But there's a sin that leads to death and I am not saying you should pray for those who commit it. Once your brother is living in sin, in distortion, is living according to the flesh, do not spread it out, but pray as God to help him. But there are sins that lead to death, which we are not to we are not allowed or permitted to pray, but for those sins that do not lead to death, we are to pray as God mercy to be upon those people. First John chapter 4, verse 18 to 21, the Bible says this. Such love as no fear. Why are you fearing to help your brethren, your sister, who is lacking clothes, food, giving you money to take away, to climb a, a bus or any transportation? mode of transport. This is what we do. Mm. People like this, that the one who, if you give him or her money, is going to be with you, is going to to, to refrain your, your finances, is going to slow down your affairs, your business is going to close all the doors. No, I must not give to her. It suits her the best. Let him be like that. Who am I to help him? I'm afraid. I don't know. I don't know him. I don't know her. We only know the first, but the how we don't know. Show me in the Bible where the apostles have ever said such thing that we do. We only know the first but not the heart. I cannot help you, not even give you my money or food. For fear that is going to bewitch me. It's going to, 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 to split us apart. It's going to sow division, dispute in my family. So I cannot accept you, not welcome in my household. Come on. What kind of behavior is this? This behavior is not from God. Show me why Christ has ever thought, mm, helping this lep leper man mm, is going to cause me trouble. My ministry, the anointing is going to go out. It's going to ruin my reputation. Mm, maybe, what if, who knows, what if he's a wizard or a sangoma or a witch? I'll be in trouble. I better leave him. No, no, no. Be a good Samaritan. Help those who are in need. Do not refrain from those who, who ask from you. All right? Because if our Lord Jesus God never did that, why wow, are we doing it? We become holier than God, who is more holy, who knows everything. Love regards not the face, nor the, the, the background of the person. Love contains no fears. Love contains no second thoughts. So if I give you, what will you do? Maybe it's gonna take you to that, to that, to the to, to the cultism stuff, to the to the to, to the temple, and do the incarnation, invoking the spirit of poverty, the spirit of sicknesses to attack me. That's not what God's telling us. Let's continue. Because perfect love expels all fear. Uh -huh. It's me, your love. It's not your perfect. That's why you are fearing to help people. Give them your money for welcome them in your house. Even pray for them. Parents are sending them with their schools, scholarship. Attach them. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. And this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. We love each other because he loved us first. If someone says, I love God but hate a Christian brother or sister, that person is a liar. 
For if we do not love people we can see, how can we love God whom we cannot see? And he has given us this command. Those who love God must also love their Christian brothers and sisters. You who used to live in this way, hating one another, your brother and sister, because he or she has harmed you someday, you stop praying for her. You stop seeking God's mercy for him. You stop giving people money. Because of the testimony, the nurses report that people spread that I have helped a certain lady on the street and this is what turned up to be. She be waiting for this and that. And you say, hey, I will no longer help those people in the street. I never give them a man, not even welcome anyone in my house. Not even give them food, not even give them my clothes for fear that thou gonna bewitch me. Using whatever item that I give to them to, 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 to block me, to imprison me in the realms. No, no, that's not the mind that God wants us, his sheep, to have. So, whatever you are, I'm gonna pray for you, asking for God's mercy. But before that, you have, you must first of all repent of your sin, each of you out there. You who used to live in fear, in doubt, in hatred, in jealousy, in anger against your fellow Christian brothers and sisters, those in the same church, in internet races, you who used to be boastful, please repent. For God knows you, although you to pretend He knows you. Return the way you used to be. Do not change. Do not listen to what the world say. Listen to what the Bible said to you tonight, this afternoon. Close your eyes. I'll pray for you, asking for God's mercy. Yes, I would that you did that in ignorance. But what I'm going to pray for you, the heaven will be widely opened above you. And the Lord is going to visit you. Close your eyes. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for you speak to us. You show us the characteristics of a true ship that you desire your children to have and to be. Forgive us for acting in the contrary of what your law and your word admonish us. Forgive us for living in fear of helping the, the poor, the needy. Those are in difficulties. Forgive them our clothes, food, money, or hospitality, show them hospitality in our households. I have messed upon us for not praying for our brethren and sisters where they needed our prayer, for not visiting them, for not truly loving them, for not feeling what they're feeling, for being so arrogant and proud. Your mercy upon us. I'm asking for your blood to cleanse our minds, to flush out every evil thought that has inflicted into us, that will stop us from helping one another, from bearing one another, from praying for one another, stopping us to show them love, to welcome anyone just as he or she is. Purify us by your blood and truth. We beg in you. Brethren, the Bible says God is love. In here there's no darkness. So you who live in darkness, please, I'm inviting you tonight to give your love to Jesus Christ. What would you what would you gain if you lose your soul after getting the whole world? After driving a Lamborghini, hammer, all those cars, you no know, wearing the most expensive fancy clothes clothes, but you lose your soul. What would you spend your eternity? God's wish is for you to know him, to be saved, to be part of that great day. And my concern is also for you to become like me. If Jesus did it for me, but in my sins, he cleans my heart, he can do it for you. No matter how high they are, how great many you have committed your sin, no matter how many times you shed blood, you have aborted, slept over with women or guys. You have lied to people or been trapped. Please, come just as you really are. Jesus is willing to help you, to cure you. If you call upon him, and you are faithful in him. Join me. Do it with me clearly. Stop for a while what you're doing. Do this part with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking unto me. You demonstrated your love toward me in this, that when I was, when I was 
still a sinner in enmity with you Christ died for me he took all my sins my pains my diseases he gave me his peace his salvation his love before my heart my thought my mind today I surrender all unto you I'm accepting you as my personal Lord and Savior come and reside in this heart of mine take a full control of me your spirit guide me in all truth I believe that you died you shed your blood you were wrongly accused and crucified but on the third day by the mighty power of God you were raised from the dead now you live at God's right hand side plenty for those who love you I entrust my spirit my heart my soul unto you as well as I was able to call upon the name of the Lord we say Jesus Christ of Nazareth save me pardon my sins in Jesus name Amen. You are now my brethren and sister. God welcome you. And if you don't have any fellowship, you are free to join me, to write me on Facebook, or to pray God for whatever country you are sitting. And these people want to lead you. And please, if you don't, do not have this book, you better buy it. And you will learn how to fear God. You will learn who God is and what he has done for you, gentle. Stay blessed. Looking forward to hear from you. Stay blessed.